There was a long period of time where we were riding in here. It was just a perfect space. It's quiet, nobody else around. It was a dream come true, really. Feels like there's some songs built into these walls. The great thing about this room is that whenever we play together, nothing ever really feels forced. The message of the album was trying to survive this train ride that we managed to find ourselves on. What up, chat? Hello. Hi. Good How are you? you? Good to meet you both. What up? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is uh, this is our rehearsal spot. This is HQ. It is. Yeah. yeah. Does it have a name? We just call it the nunnery, to be honest. <laughs> is it an actual <laughs> nunnery? Yeah, I think it is. Serious from back in the day. I think so. We're not sure. And then you and Mob bowled in and took it over. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you base yourself here for the whole making of the record? I know you didn't record it here, but you wrote it and demoed it there here. There was a long period of time where we were yeah writing in here. Um, I think towards kind of middle of 2021. It's cold and spooky. Yeah, welcome. It looks, it looks perfect. The perfect place to kind of bed down and get an album together. It is, it is that. It's just, there's a lot of distractions, so we kind of have to. <laughs> a lot of songs on these <laughs> yeah. green walls. Yeah. Can you show me around? Absolutely, yeah. No way. Hello, here are the rest of the guys. What up? Oh, hey. How are you? Good to meet you, man. Meet you. Well, Matt, how's it Josh. going? Hey, hey Josh. Hey, yeah. Rob, how are hey, you? Rob. Wow, what a space. You look up there and there's like crumbling bits of ceiling. Yeah, it's, it's, does it have like running water and stuff like that? It does. Now. Just yeah, today, yeah. Turn today. They turned it on just for you. <laughs> just <mate>. for us. <laughs> <laughs> so serious question though, how important has it been to actually have a HQ for a band when you're going into such a big thing? Like album two is, that's the difficult second album, isn't it? Because yeah. you come off the back of having 18, 19, 20 years to write your debut and suddenly everybody's saying, right, you've got to follow it up. Mm. Having a space like this must make a massive difference. It was a dream come true, really. I mean, we couldn't believe it. We still can't believe it. But um, it was it was just a perfect space. It's quiet. Nobody else around. Well, we think we've said in interviews that they're, like it's a creative hub where we've had loads of great artists in, but we've had a few parties in here as well. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's creativity. Yeah. Well, that's the aim of a base, isn't it? You need a base to strike from, mm. and this is the perfect place, as yeah. far as I can tell. What else is here, then? Well, our live room is just in there. This is such a good space. I love the paintings, actually. Oh, yeah. What's yeah. the story with them? We kind of like set up a little art room just a little bit further down the hall. And um, we kind of, I mean, that was done by Eli. That's a scene from The Sopranos. <laughs> <laughs> which, which scene is it? Uh, when, she, when she's in the confession box with the priest, I think it's season, season three or something. Ideal for that window as yeah. well, isn't it? <laughs> it felt right up there. I did some finger painting, but it didn't make the cut. No, oh. that's, that's what the graffiti is. <laughs> With Cuts and Bruises, I mean, it's a very urgent record. You Obviously, you can play because you come off the back of doing that tour in 2019, pre-COVID, where you luckily managed to get out there and do, you know, decent stints. Mm. Where I imagine you, you, you jumped up and you probably had see, gigs where you went on stage and it all just clicked. When you had to take that in force break in COVID and then come back and I think Boardmasters was maybe the first gig yeah, you did yeah. afterwards. Was, what was that like? We didn't do many festivals to begin with. I think we yeah. somehow managed to miss festival season like twice or yeah, yeah. something. But um, I think having that COVID period kind of, when we did get back to it, we, we really wanted to like, you know, grab it when it was right there in front of us. So when we were playing it on stages for festivals, I think we just had a bit more desire yeah. and almost ambition. I think the pressure was good as well. We kind of knew like, okay, say these next 10 gigs back, if they all flop, if this could be the end of us, because everyone had already forgotten about us. So. Yeah, I mean, you, like you say that, but it's quite true, isn't it? Because there's so much music that's come out since then. There's so many other bands who didn't exist before COVID and then got big, Wet Leg is probably the mm. most obvious example. You have to kind of hit the ground running when you come back. And it's the same for album two as well. When it came to making cuts and bruises and writing the songs in this room, was that a quick process, or did you labour over it? We definitely laboured over it, yeah. but it wasn't. It was. It was pretty quick. Um, I think we we came in here. We started writing material for it. <laughs> did a lot of like slow tempo, mid tempo stuff, and then we went into the studio and we needed some singles. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to like kind of uh, finish up a lot of material there, and we ended up writing a lot of new stuff in there. But the kind of you can kind of feel this room on the album. I think. It was, yeah, it was funny. It felt like we were really letting our friends just escape their families during yeah. the lockdown. People were just coming like, oh man, I needed a break, thanks. <laughs> thanks for letting me into this place and 
like back then, it didn't look as nice as it does now. Yeah. It, was... it doesn't look that nice now. <laughs> like, you know, it looks great, yeah, yeah, yeah. but like the ceiling's falling down out there. Yeah, 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 There's yeah, no yeah. toilet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Stayed here for like a week once, and I was washing my head in like a bucket. Yeah. <laughs> and then, videos yeah. Yeah, yeah, but like that was that was like so fun to us because it's just something to do as well. We were very much at that period because it just kept going oh. the whole COVID thing. So we were at that period where like anything new was just very exciting. Yeah, nice. Were there any instruments or sounds that just made their way to the front of the record and ended up standing oh, out? Yeah, it's, I think yeah. I think a lot of natural, like a lot piano. of natural, natural piano. Some of the way that the piano stuff just drops in like halfway through on multiple tracks is yeah. really nice. It's the combined actually. genius of Martin Slattery and Anthony Gann. Yeah. Really? Yeah, because Slats is an unbelievable player and knows music inside out. And he's he kind of owns the studio with that, so. You know, Slats will go in there and Ant will make him do 50 takes. And, uh, and then Ant has this genius like arrangement brain mm. where he can kind of go, okay, the piano comes in here, we'll chop that, put that yeah. in there. It's, it's just really... Are you taking all that on board? Because obviously this is probably the first time where you've worked with someone who is like that, but end game is that you can do it yourselves oh, yeah. on album four, album five or whatever. It's, we didn't go to college, so it's like, that, that is going to college. Yeah, You're in the school yeah. of Ant for five years or whatever it is. <laughs> He's... A, so good with words if he wants to convince you that mm -hmm. something's good like he'll do it mm -hmm. and i think having that energy around for us um really does like having confrontation and i think fights while we're making an album and arguments like is really important for then discovering what you like or what we like as a collective and stuff i mean ants extended when it's in the studio it's like us five but like we would have fights like during the album numerous times, like very loud fights. And tambourines. Tambourines thrown being thrown really? and stuff, yeah. Which is hilarious because then you hear the song and it could be like the, the most gentle <laughs> like song. song. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> literally, literally. <laughs> Shut the f up. <laughs> it's true though, it's true. It, it is so funny because that is like the genuine truth. It's like a song like Love Will Get You There at the time was like, oh, it's something. Yeah. Does it ever get to the point where it crosses a line and you have to have a serious chat and get back on track? Defo, I think those, those confrontation moments always led to better things. It's like, because usually when someone's upset about something or someone's quiet or because at the, at the end of the day it's like we're living together so you can't just like go to work and then clock out it's like we're constantly yeah, with each other so um so they usually lead to an answer which is like we we would have a fight but then it would lead to a really good discussion to which we're all closer and we feel like more in tune with each other and, and more together when it came from something that was the opposite so i think it's a healthy part of like every relationship i think if you stop if you stop fighting that's when I guess the relationship is really dead because you don't care anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, I think it's just important to, like if you care about somebody, you're gonna say what's on your mind or what, you yeah. know. Did you, th do you think that you learned anything from your old man? Because obviously you two never split up. Yeah. I mean, they'd be going for whatever, 40, 50 years I now, I don't know. Maybe, I'll, maybe that's too old. <laughs> no, I think you'd be right. <laughs> I think they're coming up but to I would imagine that the same way that my mum brings her work back home with her around the kitchen table and you know, I'm sure you two have had arguments over the years. You would have picked up on that and you're probably going into this with an extended knowledge of how to navigate these things, yeah, just which is naturally in you. I guess just must have picked up on conversations and stuff as a kid and then we just never wanted to be that band that was like ruled by one person or it was like, it's very, I think you're right, the longevity comes from the way it's like, if everybody has, equal part in it that everybody's equally invested and nobody will be like oh you know I want to I don't want to do that or I don't want to do that part I just want to do this part it's like yeah. the fact that we all get to I guess reap the rewards together mm -hmm. and equally it makes it um, a better experience for everybody I think there's a lot of respect for in, in the band culture especially for bands who work hard it's like it's I think it's the one accolade we're like pretty proud of is um uh, Imro in Ireland like said to us this year that we were the second uh, hardest working band in in the like the whole of the world that were Irish, and we we're like oh who was the first and it was Fontaines, yeah. so Just like um, and that that's like our favourite stat like whatever yeah. about number ones or anything like we just yeah. like we're just proud that we get to do it and we've always said we'd take every gig like weddings bar mitzvahs the lot so <laughs> the thing that I get from this record is. It sounds like it's also a reaction to doing that first wave of touring that you did and having that 2019 run. And I think you can hear that on like These Are The Days and songs like that. There's a great lyric there about your friends along for the ride. Yeah. 
I can't remember the exact thing. Yeah, uh, we were our friends but... along for the ride. Yeah, it's very evocative. I don't know if it, that is about being on the road in America yeah, no, somewhere, it, but that's the picture. It is. It was It was all that. We were listening to like Springsteen and stuff, and it was just like, yeah, it's still one of them. It's the dream, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Stuff that, that when you're 10, 11, 12, 13, you dream about, and then suddenly when you find yourself doing it, it must yeah. be great. I know, well, that was our image of success in our head of being in a band was like the dream was to be in a van going across the states somewhere some random service station mm -hmm. and like we did that in 2019 and after that it's just been downhill man yeah but it's coming back because you got like 8,000 gigs coming up yeah i know yeah was there any imposter syndrome at that point about you know writing this album did you think you were pros at that point no 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 because you've spoken previously about we still feel like we're really new and whenever we meet Arctic Monkeys, we're kind of like fanboys again. But, you know, if you're on the road in the middle of America, you're clearly there for a reason because yeah. you can sell those tickets. Yeah. We're always um, going through phases of imposter syndrome. We never feel worthy of any of the things that we're doing. I mean, we get to support Harry Styles this year in Slane Castle. We're kind of like... We're having the after party here, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you're invited. You're all invited. <laughs> Slane's going to be... Amazing for you guys, isn't it? Outrageous. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's a it's a dream come true for sure. Yeah. So you got that, which is this summer, you got Sam Fender shows as well in St. James's Park, mm -hmm. which is just like I mean, I know you and Sam are tight already. Those are gonna be celebratory. Yeah. I know, it's unfortunate that we have to get on a bus and come straight to Ireland after that. Oh, the... do you? Yeah, yeah. It's a champagne problem, though. <laughs> <laughs> I just mean we can't party with Sam, because I know he likes a good party. Yeah. And then you've got the Monkeys dates as well, which is nice, because you did the ones uh, right at the start of their last campaign. Um, did you get to hang with that band much and, and actually we stayed get out of the way time? as much as possible. Really? But, yeah, we just, because as you were saying with the imposter syndrome, we just didn't want to overstep our boundaries. And I think... Um, we're very much like them in the sense that I think we, we, we kind of like keep to our, our, um, our kind of uh, clan and like, um, we just didn't want to really like, you know, make a mess. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they were lovely. But they would approach us and talk to us. Um, we just felt like, I mean, you'd listen to them when we were like 12 yeah. on the way to school, you know. They're the band, like, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, they're the ones who have just stuck with it and just gone in this wild direction. Yeah. We have a lot of like, even just standing side of stage for those shows, it was like... Yeah. We that just, was enough. Yeah, yeah that yeah. was enough, yeah. How do you approach even playing a gig like that or the Harry gig? I mean, they're, even though you're supporting, they're still big moments for you. It's good though, because you get off at about seven o'clock. Yeah, <laughs> you can eat afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, then watch, and then watch the Arctic Monkeys. Well, thanks guys. Thanks for inviting me to the HQ and to Dublin. 